Hi YouTube, it's Boston Girl 5560 and I just got the shower. I got to um do my hair for the week and stuff like that, but I'm coming to you with another video. And my a, a video about single mother by choice. And one of the big topics that I always see on the forum and on new people or people interested or thinking about it is finances. Now for For some people, this might not be an issue. When I went to the meeting, there was definitely a lot of people making six figures or over, and I was not one of them. So I was a little concerned about doing it by myself and how was I going to do it by myself. So for the people concerned about that, I have, you know, a few notes on how to, you know, get your finances in order or understand what finances are to come or what you need to do or just my opinion on um, getting the finances together for being a single mother by choice. So first I'm going to start with the journey of actually being a single mother. So um, let's say you wanted, you decided you want to be a single mother by choice and the first thing I would do is check with your gynecologist. My problem was I didn't have a gynecologist. I went to an internal medicine doctor for everything because I thought I didn't have female issues, which <laughs> I actually had fibroids and didn't know. But I would check with your gynecologist to see what they can do for you. Some gynecologists can run the basic test for you. Um, it depends. I would check with them. I would definitely check your insurance company to see what they pay for. And um, when I was researching this, and I'm not saying do it, but I'm just going to give you the information that um, this woman who was a lesbian said, tell them that you've been trying for two years, even if you haven't, because a lot of the times they won't pay for, um, I guess they pay for finding out if you're infertile or whatever, like, and the definition of infertile can be six months to a year of trying to get pregnant. So they can't prove that you haven't been trying to get pregnant, but that's just a tidbit with the insurance companies. But I would check with your insurance company to see what they pay for. Um, some states and some insurance pay for absolutely nothing. Like mine paid for the declaration that you are infertile, but that was it. And then it only paid like after the deductible. So it did not pay much. But some people's insurance paid a lot. I had a friend, her insurance paid for IUIs. It paid for one round of IVF. So you never know. You check with, to see what your insurance pays for. Look for local clinics opposed to big reproductive endocrinologists, meaning there are local clinics depending on how liberal your city is. Um, if there's a high gay population, they tend to have these clinics more often. But clinics um, where they do IUIs at, um, yeah, there are clinics where they do IUIs at. So basic IUIs is like the first call of action usually from anybody trying to get pregnant on their own. And um, IUIs can be done by a nurse, not just a doctor or a midwife or you know, those kind of medical professionals. So don't discount those those small clinics that might do it for $200 as opposed to going, and that's not including the press of sperm, but, you know, instead of going to a re reproductive endocrinologist who wants you to do all these ultrasounds and all these blood tests, and it could run up to $1,200 a pop. So that's a big upcharge. Okay, so now let's say you did all this and you're thinking about the cost of after having a baby. The biggest cost is child care. And what I would do is research where you'd want your child to go to daycare. You know, whether that be A, a family member, have you, you know, researched if a family member would do it for a while. Um, there's definitely things like kinder care, au pairs, um, nannies, nanny shares. Um, there's also, if, you, if you're really watching your pennies, a home daycare always tends to be a lot less than those big daycare centers. And don't discount home daycares because there are very good home daycares and they do get the personal touch. And also, if you're doing a home daycare, I know the state of Georgia have this and I'm sure other states have this, 
you can find a website where the state reviewed the daycares and what they passed and what they failed. And that's good for any daycare, whether it's a kinder care or a big private school or a home daycare. You want to see when the state came and checked them out, what happened, you know? Because recently, there's some fiasco that went on at a major daycare here that was really upper crust and very expensive. So things can happen at all daycare, so I would not discount the home daycare either. Okay, baby stuff tends to be expensive because they know us. First time mothers want us, you know, want every little gadget, want all these little things for our new baby. But you know what? A lot of people buy this stuff and never use it. So to spare expense, you know, A, put, you know, first of all, when you go to make your baby shower registry, take someone with you who's had a baby because they give you the real 411 on what you need and what you really don't need. And you'd be shocked at what you really don't need and what's like a lot of fluff. Um, for the first six or seven weeks, your kid barely wears clothes, you know, and I heard that but I wasn't really hearing it because my child has a ton of clothes she has not worn yet and she'll never wear they're like three months six months whatever but she was in pajamas most of the time because she was asleep most of the time so it is true like almost when people say at the daycare ask for clothes that are 12 months and over I'm like yeah whatever but they are so right ask for clothes that are 12 months and older because those are the ones you'd use. Um, you can also go to consignment sales for equipment like um, high chairs, bumbos, you know, all these. Everything and anything is at those consignment sales. And there's a website called Consignment Mommies where you can find the consignment sales in your state. And they're usually done at churches. A lot of churches do them. A lot of multiple groups do them. Like people have four, five, three, four kids. Anybody who has twins or up you know, who buys multiple amounts of baby equipment tends to sell them at uh, these consignment sales. It's like mommy for multiple sale or something. And when I went, it was packed and they were selling everything from books to toys to strollers to cribs. So, I mean, go there, check that. And some of the clothes were actually brand new, like still had the tags on them. So it is worth checking out eBay and Craigslist. Craigslist is a little sketchy. There's always some sketchiness I feel about Craigslist. But eBay is just like shopping and they send it to your house. So I would not discount eBay and people sell lots of clothes and they'll show you the pictures of the clothes. And um, that has really worked to my advantage, especially in buying a lot of clothes that she might not wear. So I don't feel guilty or bad about buying a lot of clothes and she doesn't wear a third of them. So what? I didn't spend that much on them in the first place. Things I would not buy used. I would not buy bottles used. Something about that. You know what I mean? Like if I have another child, which we'll see if that happens, but all new bottles. I would not buy, you know, recycle bottles. And secondly, a car seat. Because they claim, I don't know what the year expectation on a car seat is, but supposedly, like, every year they come up with new safety features and requirements or whatever. And if you're on a budget, you really don't have to spend a tremendous amount on a car seat. Um, Walmart has car seats, if you go online, ranging from $30 to $500. So you could find a car seat in your budget. Um, her second level car seat that I got, I wish I spent a little extra on it. I don't think I had a job when I was looking for it, you know, cause I got laid off, but so I was trying to be frugal and it works. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I might upgrade, who knows? Um, once I get my finances in order, I might upgrade. Mm. Also, don't discount that you need to upgrade your living situation right away. Um, some people do, some people don't, but I've definitely seen people still stay in a one bedroom for a while until, um, you know, cause it saves money, um, until the child gets a little older. I mean, you tend to do a lot of up and down. My child has her own room, literally never in that room, but that's okay. That's just my situation. But I've known people, especially in places like New York and stuff to stay in a one bedroom for a while. So it's, 
it's not the worst thing in the world if you're trying to save the dollars for things you want later. If you're not breastfeeding, there is nothing wrong with generic formula. Actually, it has the same ingredients as the other formula, like the Infamils and the Similax. And the majority of the time, Ava was on um, generic formula. But I did buy um, the ready-made formula from when we went out to places because it was just easier to pour it in a bottle than mix it up. I don't know. I'll pay for convenience. But other than that, generic formula, the, and I never even thought about it until I was working this job and this girl, she had three kids under the age of four, under three kids under the age of three, three or four or something. And she said she made the mistake the first go around and paid for the expensive formula, but now realized that generic formula was just as good. So for the second and third kid, they had generic formula. And it does save in the budget. And I recommend Target up and up. Don't buy it online, though. You can look at my video. And um, Walmart Parents Choice. I've also used um, BJ's, their generic brand. Um, they're pretty much all the same if you really look at it. And the thing about Up and Up in um, Target, they have the version of everything. Like they have the gentle and female version. You know the generic of each version you might be looking for. So I would definitely try those if you're trying to save a buck. That's it. Bye, YouTube.